Hey guys, this is Kenny from the Level With You channel. Just here to let you guys know if you guys want to come chat with us, we got a Discord server up and running. Link is in the description below. You could give us some feedback, ask us questions, just interact with us or in general. You can also find us on social media platforms. Instagram, we're LVL With You. Twitter, we're Level With You. And on Facebook, you can search Level With You. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Stay level. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to episode 26 of the Level With You show. My name is Wiley Olmstead. I am joined today by Anthony Dort. Can you take me higher? Please. Kenny Castro. No, I can't take you higher. Oh, that's a bummer. And you can't see him, but we guarantee he's in the room somewhere. Tyler Hadley. Who's got a face? You do. Not on screen. All right. If you're a regular watcher of the show, first of all, thank you very much. You may be noticing that our digs are looking a little bit different. See, what we did is we took things from over there. We put them over here. We got a new round table to help facilitate discussion. So we're not kind of straining our necks looking back and forth all the time. So we hope you enjoy the new look. Uh, there's some other housekeeping stuff to take care of. We've got It'll only start to look better each week. Exactly. I mean, we got the pumpkin. We got, oh yeah, happy Halloween. It's coming right up. It's like two days away. So I yep. hope you're having a good spooky time. Uh, speaking of spooky times, you can check out our ongoing Let's Play series of the new narrative horror game, Man of Medan. Woo! Sorry. First episode is going up the day after this, so that should be the day on of Halloween. Halloween. On Halloween, what better way to spend time with your loved ones than to gather around the PS4 and watch a Let's Play of Level With You. Uh, we've also got the usual long plays going up from Anthony. He's been, you know, cracking at it with uh, Astral Chain, yeah. Link's Awakening. Uh, uh, so if yeah. you want to check out some gameplay of those, feel free. He's also opening cards. You can also find us on podcast services if you'd rather just hear us rather than look at us. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Podcast Addict, Stitcher. If there's any more that we're not on that you'd like to see us on, let us know in the description below. Speaking of the description below, you can also find timestamps now. If you want to fast forward to us speaking about a certain game, we've got Tyler over there taking notes, editing the episode, putting it up, and uh, making things easier to find for you. All right. Let's get to the show, which is a weekly video game podcast where we get together and talk about, you guessed it, video games. But first of all, we like to do a little catch up. So what's going on in the life of Anthony? Ooh, man, I'll tell you. Ah, what is going on? I cleaned uh, this weekend. I played Scary Game with you guys to get in the mood, and that was good. Yeah, yeah. Been pretty good. Uh, Watching any scary movies? Actually, I did. I saw, I don't know if I've talked about this yet on the podcast, but I saw 13 Ghosts a couple weekends ago, and that was really good. Is that an old one? It yeah. is. It's got the guy from Monk is one of the main characters. I forget his name, and the guy that who played Shaggy. Scary as crap. Yeah, it's really, it was really good. It was like just the like right amount of like scary, but cheesy. Yeah. Huh, I don't know if I've actually heard of that one. It's really good. Yeah, I, w I would check it out if, if I were you. Highly recommend it. Cool. Um, I saw a really cool movie in theaters, um, The Lighthouse. It stars, who's in it? Um, Robert Pattinson, Twilight guy. He's actually a really good actor. He's, mm. the, he's the next Batman, if you didn't know. Oh. Um, and Willem Dafoe. It's in black and white. It's very um, artistically filmed. Uh, it's shot in four by three. Very intense, very uh, surreal. Not sure what's real and what's fake. Okay. Um, just really intense performances. Uh, had a lot of fun seeing it. We saw it at the little Amherst Cinema. Um, mm. We didn't expect this, but it was a completely packed house. There might have been, you know, five or six seats that were still available. Um, so, Amherst does get pretty full. I mean, it is a small place, but yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of people that show up to it. So yeah, I've been trying to get in the spooky mood a little bit, um, watching some some good horror movies. Played played through Blair Witch, which you can hear about my impressions on that if you watched last week's episode. Um, so what about you, Ken? Anything going on with you? You know, you got a little new do going on. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Looking fresh, as fresh as can be, Tyler. As fresh as can be. Yeah, you got a nice close shave, man. It's like yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't think I've ever. Ha I've never gone to a barber and gotten a shave. Me neither. Ever. Yeah. It's a little scary, but it's it's pretty worth it if you think because they do a pretty good. You know, if they know what they're doing, they got a nice sharp razor. They'll, they'll yeah. treat you right. Well, I've been going on him for almost twelve years, so yeah. You, see, you guys have that intimate relationship. How much? How much extra you pay for that? <laughs> for the for my, it's a whole package, so it's like twenty, twenty-five in total. Yeah, that's I mean, the whole haircut, everything. That's haircut. not bad. I mean, I go to Shave. 
the the chain haircut places and all that's like 20 bucks i mean that, that that's including tips though it's like 16 and i'll give them like yeah. a four or five dollar tip yeah. yeah so my 25 is including tips but i've been going to him forever so Hook i think he's up. happy with that but if i can get a shave i think maybe i need to start going to a to a barber mm. um, to my dominican the barber. place does he cut white, white <laughs> people's <laughs> hair? <laughs> he, cuts, he cuts everybody's hair, man. I'm sorry, my friend. You have to leave. Why? <laughs> There's just no pro- no person. <laughs> I've packed full. Um, he does the, everybody's hair. The place Hero in Northampton, they do the same, um, you know, the hot shave and Ooh. everything like that. I think it's 35, 40 there. Um, but... There's another place in Holyoke, too. I think you can get... Uh, my buddy goes there I work with, and you get, like, a big, tall IPA for when they start you off, and then they cut your hair, and they can do your beard. I forget about Oh, it. yeah. I heard about another place like that, I want to say, in Amherst, although maybe we're thinking of the same place. It's, it, yeah. They might be both. I mean, I'm not even sure of the name, so yeah. it could be... I think when I went to anyway. Louisville, there was a place that was a barbershop and a brewery. That's awesome. One. Oh, wow. And just how great of an idea is that? <laughs> That's Though I would amazing. be afraid that a bunch of hair would be in my hair. <laughs> That's the only thing. That's how they fermented in the... <laughs> <laughs> the amino acids help. This is the pomade IPA. <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, this. My my friend has this really great idea for a laundromat slash bar. So you can just wait and have your laundry. It's called like something suds. It's like... Duds and suds? <sighs> Duds and Suds is good. That's very good. You can use but it I think I, there were like two other really good names that she had. Um, but anyway, I think that's a pretty cool idea. I mean, yeah, you're just sitting on your phone waiting for your toes, your toes, your clothes to tumble. So why not get a little buzz on? It's true. Right. You can get very toasty true. waiting for this clothes. All right. So we got some big games that came out this week. We got the Outer Worlds. We got Call of Duty Modern Warfare. That happened again. And then uh, that's really the big two ones that I think we're going to be discussing. So I know I've been dabbling with the Outer Worlds. Why don't we start with that? It's been out for almost a week now. So you may have heard that it's been getting some pretty good word of mouth. Uh, somewhere sitting around at 85, 86 on Metacritic. Um, reception has been mostly positive. Kenny, you and I have been playing it. Give me your early impressions. Um, I really like it. So I, I like Western RPGs. like in the vein of fallout you know and mm-hmm. they're the ones behind fallout new vegas which i played you know bravery brief briefly so i didn't play too much of it but i'm from what everybody tells me it's the fallout to play you know which i i beat four oh, okay and i enjoyed four and so i jumped into this and seeing some of your notes i kind of agree you know like the story hasn't taken off for me yet and i'm already um already left the first world um already went to Groundbreaker. Yeah, yeah. I've already picked up a bunch of quests from there. Um, I feel as though being being somebody that plays the RPGs, I should have upped the difficulty because it's it feels too easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on normal, it feels way too easy and kind of finds finds me kind of disinterested at times. Just how easy the combat is at times. It, you're not really having to spec. You're, you're not having to think about specking your character because mm-hmm. most of the fights are pushovers. I, exactly, and my character knowing how some of these fallout and you know the games are heavy into conversation mm-hmm. i've been i spec my character out towards my conversation so did i totally so, completely so that i can lie persuade i'll do all of that out of everything yeah almost anything almost anything. Yeah, like there's been a couple times where i still had like oh you don't have 50 lie yet yeah but so it's like very very rare the moment mm-hmm. where you i don't have enough into those categories to kind of just lead the conversation where i want it to go mm-hmm. uh but that i you know knowing how these games go you spec it i spec it out that way and it's been going super easy but i love the characters you know they they have nice nice dialogue you mm-hmm. know, nice little humor to them you know i like the companions chiming in as i'm talking to npcs yep you know those are that's always fun great interactivity um and some some extra things that I found interesting, like the the shroud, you know, you picked up the shroud, right? The shroud. Where if you pick up an ID, somebody's ID badge, or you turn, you could disguise as. Them. Yeah, I, I picked it up, but I actually didn't figure out how to use it. Oh, I've used it already. What do you is it in your inventory? I just don't know how to actually so equip it. You have to find like these IDs. It's so it's you'll find them through quests. Okay. So I did one quest for the vicar 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 mm-hmm. so for him he i needed to go into 
the area to access a terminal mm -hmm. you know so when you go to do that quest you find an id of a worker so once you enter the the restricted area it shrouds you automatically oh is that what happens because i was just like i'm not i'm not gonna walk through here i don't want to start a firefight because <laughs> i was stuck on that same mission i was like i guess i'll do Pavardi's lo loyalty mission nope so it shrouds you instantly but you get a meter that that just drains while and then once it's drained they could see you as re as your regular, and then you gotta persuade yourself out out of it, out of that conversation after somebody engages with you, and then it shrouds you back up. Mm -hmm. But then the and then but then every single time that that the bar gets depleted, it's harder to persuade yourself out of the conversations. Like the persuasion keeps going up and up. Huh. Like the difficulty. Is there it. a way to replenish the cloaking after after every conversation? So oh. if you exit the area, yes, you replenish it back to zero, and then you could jump right back in. Okay. But, so that first one with the vicar, I honestly jumped in, did what I had to do, and I was out before my bar hit fifty percent. Mm, okay. But I didn't really explore, which most likely I could have, and come exploring, to, you know, checking terminals or stealing stuff. But I didn't. I just accessed the terminal and left. So how else have you been specking your character? You've been doing melee or uh, guns? Guns. Guns. Yeah. Same. We. I think we have the same character. Uh, almost yeah. pretty much. So it's is so my three main. Specs are the persuasion ones, the range, and the leader ones. Oh my god, literally the same character. Literally the same character. <laughs> yeah. How would these broken down? How are the specs like so, opposed to like So other? I will say the one thing I really like is that it they group up the specs. And when you put in a point for each one, mm -hmm. it increases three 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 uh, three skills or whatever. Okay. two or three two or three yeah depending cool. on what because the mm -hmm. leadership, leadership one is two of them. same with defense you know defense yeah. as well so it's kind of like you're pumping a tree and then the branches are getting the experience yeah. exactly so okay. you pull one point in and they'll gain one point each and it'll tell you break it down like when this one hits 40 you unlock this so i pumped up actually i pumped up my medical one so that i can access the third third slot of my inhaler which also I thought was pretty cool. I haven't uh, pumped that up yet. So because the inhaler, I now I didn't realize it at first that you kind of customize your inhaler to you know increase your health, but also to give you these stat boost, depending on what items you equip it to the mm -hmm. slots next to the inhaler. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, let me get a third slot so that I could kind of add one that gives me you know stamina or whatever you know mm -hmm. or more dilation for my my time dilation mm -hmm. you know, that where it recharges faster so i was like okay because if you're in the middle of a fight and my health is going low i recharge my health and then increase my recharge rate of the time dilation which is pretty much vats yeah from fallout you know so yeah the time dilation if you played fallout it's a similar concept uh, in vats in three it would and new vegas it would totally stop the game in four it would just slow it down greatly uh and this one it, it is like four is and it just slows it down it feels a little bit less um it feels a little bit more organic than highlighting separate body parts and stuff um i think the shooting overall feels pretty good i mean it's not to the level of call of duty or doom or something like that but yeah. uh, it's definitely serviceable um the i'm finally now starting to find some cool weapons i feel like i'm about 10 hours in i'm at the planet after groundbreaker um I'm just starting to begin to explore that one. It does seem like it's uh, at the biggest planet I've been to um, yet. Did you talk about Monarch? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Monarch. I haven't gotten to Monarch yet. Yeah, yeah. so I just got to Monarch. Um, been doing Pavardi's quest line. I think she's a great character. She's mm -hmm. super sweet. Her little romance on... <laughs> on Groundbreaker with Jun Lei. Yeah. Jun Lei. That's pretty fun. Um, these are two female companions? Yeah. Well, Jun Lei is not a companion, but Pav Pavardi is. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, She's played by Ashley Birch, who is Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, okay. as well as a few other... Oh, Tiny Tina from Borderlands. Oh, oh nice. nice. Yeah. And some other... She, she's pretty big as far as uh, female uh, video game voice actors. But yeah, I mean, there, I will say some of the things that aren't super clicking for me is that I do miss the sense of uh, discovery that you get from something as large scale as something like a Fallout, where you're just stumbling upon these random vaults and, oh man, I could have never seen this character. And, you know, the areas are very sort of confined. Yep. Uh, it's got more of a Nice Old Republic or a um, Mass Effect type of structure, um, which is fine. And, you know, the game actually is almost has as much in 
common with a Mass Effect than it does a Fallout, especially no. with the companions. Because when I think of companions, I think of like in Skyrim and Fallout, where they're pains in the asses, they like get lost and they can die, and they don't really have too much to add to the story. But no, they're party members. Like I think yes. it's almost a disservice to call them companions because it has that connotation. But like they are. Big parts of the story, uh, their their abilities in in uh, combat are super fun. Yeah, and like you could tell them to, you could kind of point at an area and tell them to hold down that spot. You yeah. know, like you could give them the easy commands with the D pad, mm -hmm. which is super easy, super accessible. And I haven't tried any of the abilities because I feel we're more in, we're ripping through some some fights so easy that I, we really haven't been tested to the point where I need to use. You haven't but even like, tried them. All you do no. is hit left or right on the D pad, and you. Do I them. know. I just we like when I see enemies, I just go into time dilation and I start ripping through. I, you so, should definitely pump up that difficulty. Yeah, so, yeah. because I'll, I'll rip through one, and then I already killed him, and I'm still in time dilation, and I'm already moving my uh, my, my cursor over the next enemy that I can see, and I'm ripping through half his health, and like okay. so, it's it's tough. So. But they're funny though. Like if you the V car, he'll spout off like a funny one liner every time before he pulls out oh, really? this big shotgun thing, and it's like. So and so will show mercy on you, but I won't. <laughs> and uh, Felix, have you? Do you have Felix yep, in your party? I, I he just Felix. does a straight up drop kick. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh so wow! It's and it it works every time. I will say that like it's very smooth. You just look at any enemy, your character will just fly out of nowhere and do a drop <laughs> kick or a shotgun blast, and it's pretty satisfying. All right, so I got to check that out tonight when I play. Yeah. Um, I will say the side quests feel really good. Like they, you know how some side quests feel tedious. Mm -hmm. They haven't felt that like that yet, mm -hmm. um, because between all the pickups and the messages you could read on terminals, and it just adds to the story and the lore of, uh, of surrounding outer worlds. Um, so it's entertaining to go on these these side side quests. Yeah. Um, yes, I do feel like I do miss the sense of discovery from Fallout, mm -hmm. just like you. Um, when I opened the map and I was like, wow, these maps seem pretty small, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, at least from Terra and Terra 1, I went to, you know, I'm doing side quests because that's what I do in, in RPGs. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely want to explore a lot. And, I mean, play as much as I can because I am enjoying it. And Exactly. So I'm, I'm like, I'd rather not rush to get to the end. So yeah. I'm like running through a lot of the side quests. And what I'll do always also is that I'll finish like four side quests at a time before I turn them in. So if I if all my if I gotta turn them all in in groundbreaker, so I'm gonna finish as many that I have to turn in at groundbreaker yeah, mm -hmm. before I go back. So Efficient. I've been, so grocery shopping. Yeah, that's way you do yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, let me finish this one. Mm -hmm. I think we should say a little bit more about the sense of humor of the game. Like it's not like um, beating you over the head with jokes like something uh, Borderlands might do. It's a lot, I would say, more sophisticated and subtle in its. Um, the word I'm looking for satire. I say I say it's definitely somewhere in the middle of Fallout for some of Fallout's humors in some of the sections, you know, depending on quest lines and Borderlands. It's not over the top like Borderlands, but it definitely gets you thinking. You're like, wait a second, did they is that did I catch that right? You know. Mm -hmm. So it's I like the humor. You know, I like that that smart. It's understated. Yes, it's yeah. like a Frasier versus. Uh... Family Full guy. house, yeah. Family guy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Because some people definitely are over the top with some of the things they say, you know. Yeah, definitely. But then there's characters that have like actually really deep and good conversation. Like the mm -hmm. V car, his yes. his whole like religion thing is really cool. About the plan and figuring out the plan and his obsession with it. Yeah, and then he's so shady about it as well. Mm -hmm. Like all my conversations with him, like, why did you hesitate? He's like, no, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm gonna. I'm not. I did not hesitate. You know, it was just a moment of whatever, whatever. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. but it's all about the plan. I'm, I, I just, you know, I want to figure out or further the plan. And yeah, then, so, yeah. So, so you're like, I'm, just, I'm intrigued about what this plan is. You know, I want to find out more. Hopefully, his side, his quest line leads me to some answers about the plan. Ultimately, mm -hmm. um, I do find the premise interesting about how all these big corporations came together and bought pretty much a sec, a, a sector of the, the galaxy. Uh, the galaxy, yeah. yeah. Like and they're like Borderlands, you know, pretty yeah, much. Almost like, like, are they vying for controls? The whole thing. It's like, oh, you certain corporations and keep side with certain. So you can increase your reputation with certain ones. Okay, you know they're all collective. They're all part of the boardroom. Yeah, yeah, the board, uh, the yeah. board. Um, and it's interesting. It's interesting so far. The premise, of, you know, I'm hoping that, you know, 
I know we're not gonna have a twist like Fallout Four where you end up finding out. Just nah, 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 I didn't oh. beat it. I just, uh, spoilers. I just, it's okay. Did you never beat it? I didn't beat it yet. No, oh, but I didn't do it. it's all good. I mean, I, I'll oh, get to it bad. one day. I, but, I won't get yeah. into it then. So we'll see. We'll, <laughs> I'm hoping there's some kind of twist with the board at the end, somewhat a la Fallout Four. Mm -hmm. Catch me off guard and be like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. Even yeah, though I saw Fallout Four is coming. Did you? I did. Um. So yeah, anything else you want to say on Outer World before we move on to the latest in the little series called Call of Duty? God, no, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for that frustration. Go ahead. No, <laughs> okay. no. So that was the <laughs> good, <laughs> the Outer Worlds. Uh, Kenny, Tyler, and I have all been playing Call of Duty: Modern Warfare. Um, I've actually only been dabbling in the campaign, uh, which is what I like to knock out before I move on to multiplayer. I'm about three or four hours in. Um, I will say so far I'm very impressed with it on a technical level. I think that they really blew it out of the park as far as uh, visuals go. It's the motion capture in the cutscenes is phenomenal. The the lighting in the uh, firefights, a lot of them are at night and there's explosions happening and it really creates a chaotic feel that I haven't had in a shooter um, maybe ever in, in terms of uh, just raw intensity and not knowing what the hell is happening, which I think is conveying the feeling of, you know, battle and war pretty well. Um, the story moves along at a pace that I think is a little bit too quick for me. It's almost like, oh, wow, I'm back. Like there's a cut scene that's really good. And then I'm in another mission. And I'm like, oh, wait, I'm not getting enough time to sort of uh, digest what's happening before I'm moving on to the next thing, which, you know, maybe they did some focus testing and they, Found out that people like you know break mm. breakneck speed and what kind of, um, wasn't that like how the other ones were too like the like Call of Modern Warfare. It's been Modern a couple of years since I played them, but I, I think maybe it was. I know you're bopping around between like different characters at least, but I mean I I can't even speak. I've never. Really you're probably right, them. Anthony. To be honest, but <laughs> yeah, I feel like Modern it. Warfare, four, Call of Duty Four, Modern Warfare, the campaign missions were pretty fast. <laughs> you and you were kind of like moving through them pretty quickly. I think that maybe that game did a, each mission felt a little bit more distinctive and they kind of blend into each other a little bit more in this one. Mm -hmm. So I feel like things are going along at a really quick clip. Uh, in that game, you would like be in the snow in one level and then the right. next you'd be, you know, in the drone and the next you'd be, I don't know, in a deserty looking place. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not to detract from it. I mean, the... Uh, Another thing that it really stands out is the sound. It's something that I heard a lot going into the game that they spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to make the sound as good as possible. And I had the sound bar cranking last night when I was home alone. Just and the and these fights are so so intense. I'm playing the game on regular, uh, which is it actually defaults to recruit when you start the game. It's like that's where the bar is, so that's different. But um, I died probably 15 or 20 times in my three or four hours just because oh, wow. you will get caught off guard. And, you're, you know, the time to kill in Call of Duty has always been short, but I feel like it may be even shorter in the campaign of this. Um, there were times where I was getting really overwhelmed, where enemies were just being really smart and, you know, hiding under a table, and they caught me off guard. Uh, the night vision looks fantastic. Like, from a production value standpoint, I think – that it's this far in a generation, that's pretty sweet that they were able to like go the extra mile. And even though we're getting PS5 and Xbox 5 or 4 or whatever they're going to call it, um, they are squeezing as much as they can out of this console. these consoles. I'm playing it on our original PS4, and it's still pretty awesome looking. Um, so as far as it, it is, it's what you want from a Call of Duty game. I mean, I'm somebody that's been in and out of the series ever since three uh, back in the day on 360 uh, i haven't played them all i have played most of the campaigns and this is definitely on the higher tier i would say so far um i'm interested to see what you guys have to say about the multiplayer it's pretty sweet i like it so far i think i'm level <laughs> 16 um i've got like my couple of custom loadouts that i'm feel comfortable with um I mean, it's very fast. I mean, the sound design, it, yes, is another thing. I mean, I've been playing it with headphones on most of the time, and it's pretty amazing just, like, hearing, like, the footprints around around you or the footsteps whenever somebody's nearby you, whether it's a teammate or an enemy. 
Um, I feel like the the enemy footprints are always sounding louder, so you kind of know if somebody's nearby. You can anticipate it. Um, when I showed up to record on Sunday, Tyler had his pants off, his boxes around his ankles, playing with his controller over his little parts. He was just going, <laughs> ooh! <laughs> so I thought you had a good time. It looked like you were having a good time. Oh, yeah. I don't lots want to of fun. And, uh, yeah, I played some crossplay with Kenny. Oh, well, yeah. How, how'd that work? I mean, it's iffy. I get it's kind of... You know, I couldn't hear Tyler at one point, but then but everybody else that was in the party with us could hear him and can hear me, but I can't hear him. How does that work? If you're playing on different consoles, how do you join a party? No. So, we, I mean, our party, like, head in the lobby, you know, before we went into match. Oh, okay. Making. So you're using in-game chat, not... not... Yeah, in-game yeah, yeah. Chat, okay. That's so the only way to talk to people across yeah. play. Gotcha. They, could, they could hear Tyler, and Tyler could hear them, but Tyler, I couldn't hear Tyler. So but, I like, but I could hear him. <laughs> but you he could hear me. So it was a little frustrating. Huh. Okay. Um, that was without, I, you know, even though at first thought I was like, hey, make sure you, you don't got me muted. I didn't have him muted. So. so what modes are you playing? You know, that's like, I really need to dive into some of like the bigger, like new modes. So um, Team Deathmatch? I, I've been playing Team Deathmatch, Domination, pretty much those two. Mostly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the difference? Um, uh, what's Domination again? Is uh, there's three points you're trying to capture the points? Yep. Oh, so control. Yeah, yeah, pretty much from Destiny. Yeah, so they have one called Cyber Attack. Um, Cyber Attack, if I remember right, you take it, you you pick up a bomb, and then you have to go towards the target. You know, and you try to um, arm it, or they try to take you out, which would be what is that? Search and destroy. Search and right? destroy. So yeah, that's what they call it now, Cyber Attack, I believe. And then they have one called headquarters where you gotta where you go and take control of the headquarters, and once you do, I, I gotta try that one again because I used to love playing headquarters in yeah, Call so, of Duty Four. So once you take headquarters, you have to you have to defend it. But if they kill everybody from your team, you lost you lost you. And before the time timer runs out from controlling the headquarters, you don't get the point. Hmm. Yeah. So you know, there's that one. Um, I really want to try some of the like the the big matches with like the well, tanks like, and the vehicles and everything. Ground war. I think, I think it's ground war. Yeah, it's a little bit more battlefield esque. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is there still neat. gun game mode in that? Have you? Yeah, yeah, gunfight. Like, I think it's called. Yeah, where you, every time you kill, you get a different gun or it switches your gun. I believe. That's pretty. No, cool. I, I actually don't think that they took that out. Well, I think it's gunfight. The duels. The gun, duels. Gunfight is the two v two. Two v two. Um. But yeah, I wish, I wish they still had the the gun, the, the, gun, the gun play, whatever. Because what you called. upgrade, I think you all everyone starts with a pistol, and then every kill you get, you upgrade. Yeah, guns. and then like your last weapon's a knife, and <laughs> yep, yep, I love that one. It's fun. The so I will. Say, I played is good. I will say, after day one, motherfuckers are camping. <laughs> oh yeah, like, like that. There's no fucking tomorrow. That's right. pretty much the meta. Like people on stairwells and people just staking out rooms. Been that and, way, I mean, kind I didn't of. Think it was but, gonna happen so early. And is this is are, are people yeah. camping and killing you on spawn? Some are. Some are. Okay, Some are. but Some it's yeah. mostly they're just into matches. And once they get they once find they, their spot, once they find their spot to hover over your spawn, it's done. Like you're you're sitting there, you're just like, what the fuck? Might as well hang back and let them come to us. Speaking of camping, have you guys heard of Jordy Jordson or Wings of Freedom or Wings of Redemption? No. He's a big. Uh, he's one of the first Call of Duty Let's Players on YouTube. Oh, he's really? big uh, back in the day. They actually, the channel down the rabbit hole. Check it out. Just put a really good like hour long. Do- like I think it's a two hour long documentary out on him. It's super interesting. But it pretty much goes through like how he got his start. But he was like a big camper. And to oh, bring it back really? to that, he was like he used to defend it. He would always like talk. He would go and play like games. But then he would do commentary over it. Back when Let's Plays were just called like YouTube game commentary. Huh. And there was a whole scene I guess around like Call of Duty commentary at the time. But it's I definitely recommend like very interesting like check it out like his his character arc is nuts his history of camping mm-hmm. Fuck camping. I mean ca- gets a, I camping's a viable strategy especially when it's basically the meta <laughs> I mean if you wanna be good and get those kill streaks and everything then you gotta you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> no I feel is Fuck that with that I run around and I fucking rip people mm-hmm. apart they call me Mr Claymore you'll f- triple one of my Claymore somewhere. I've run and I placed them down like, <laughs> in random spots. Don't get them. Um, is that? I mean, I haven't watched any really high level Call of Duty play. I, is that what the what they do? Are they camping all the time? Well, fucking likely. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's just interesting. It's like uh, some it's people like, are just really good. Yeah, I feel like they're. You know, if you're really good, you're probably you know not sitting behind a toilet waiting to. 
pump somebody with a shotgun. Well, I mean, it's kind of like it's like intermittent camping. Like you're in a spot for a certain amount of time, and then kind of like recognize when if like spawn spawn points are changing, so you know kind of like if you need to go somewhere else, and then camp somewhere else for like a, a couple minutes, and then. Because it's like every other Call of Duty. Once you fire your gun without a silencer, your position's revealed, and people are gonna. If a UAV goes up, people know where your position is. Um, so I feel like that's kind of like the whole play with Call of Duty is just one being good and one just being able to camp for a little while, move around to a new spot, camp for a little while, and just like rack up those kill streaks. Fuck the campers. Kenny has spoken against the campers. I hate them. I hate them. What a I don't like your outdoors. I don't like your grilling. I don't like your tents. Get them out of here. None of it. None of it. I fucking. Those are the people I enjoy grilling. Once I get, a, <laughs> once I, once I get a camper, I fucking. I'm like, yo, kill me. I'm a tea bag them. I'm a tea bag them. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna bring it back to the 360 days. I'm a fucking tea bag them. <laughs> <laughs> teammate kills me. <laughs> Oh I mean, God. I've like I've been going back to my old roots with Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Four, using like the MP5, the M4A1. Um, I've actually gotten into like sniper rifles. I didn't think I would get be this into the, using the sniper rifles in this game, Fucking but camping. I've been starting to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're losing them to the dark side, Kenny. He's like <laughs> Tyler's a meta guy. You know it's a viable strategy, Kenny. Like, yep. As soon no. as Kenny logs off, finally I can camp again. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, could take, he could camp all he wants. He knows that I'm taking my fucking my my FAL. I, I go with double primary weapons. That's what I've been doing. I've been doing submachine gun sniper rifle. So I do submachine gun so I do. I actually picked up a blueprint. So the blueprints are pretty cool, Tyler. I don't know if you picked up one yet. How do you pick them up? So I picked up my first blueprint by doing a mission. Um, so when you go to the barracks and you check challenges. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I set the boot camp mission, and I went and I did that one in like one match. Um, so I got the piercer blueprint, which is the MP7 with like three attachments to it, and that one I love it. I love it compared to the MP5 and the AUG. It's amazing. So I've been using that weapon, even though I haven't unlocked the weapon, I have the blueprint. So I could use the weapon because I have the blueprint, you know. So I go with that one and the F- FAL. So the FAL I use it as my long range weapon, you know. It's a also it's a semi automatic assault rifle. Mm-hmm. So that's my loadout. So I just run around with my MP7, dropping Trash. claymores, dropping claymores, ripping through whoever's running around me, and then getting when, shot in the head by the a camper. If, if, yep. <laughs> Listen, there's some matches that I'll be, you know, they're like shorter matches, and I'm like, yeah, and I'll get my my three four kills right mm-hmm. away, and then fucking camper. All I see is the right before my death, the little fucking light see, that they're fucking aiming down the sides, and I'm like, I'm de- this is death. Well, well, what what a got, great thing they added to games with just being able to see a sniper from the distance. I was going to say, like, how cool. long has it been in Call of Duty 4? Because I, like, didn't really even know that was a thing in games. I think games. that's an attachment oh, really? you have to have, yeah. right? No, it's just, no, is it just part of once it. It's a, once a, a sniper, lot of games now. Once the sniper is looking down their sights, it has, like, the glare from their scope. So like you see it in the distance and you're like that, instantly, that's cool. that's detail instantly i mean it's I, overdone it. it's just so oh, yeah. it makes them less op yeah exactly. that's a good call yeah. but when i see it like i'll turn into open window i see glare and i'm like oh death <laughs> can't you duck or anything you have like the no because slide? the moment i'm, I'm like Soup! <laughs> <laughs> super mario <laughs> Nani? Nani? <laughs> Super Mario Sunshine! <laughs> so you should shout every time you kill a camper now. Right? I you should. should. Speaking okay. of Super Mario Sunshine... No, just kidding. I wish. Oh, I wish there was something. Anthony, like that. you been playing anything? I've been playing Dragon Quest uh, Switch. Okay, I came yeah. came about that again. I know. We were hearing about your exploits last week. You can give us a quick little update if you want. Uh... It's same stuff. I'm in the desert now. Just did the desert stuff. Played the game. You know, it's pr- pretty good so far. I really, I got one of my favorite characters, Silvando. He just joined me, oh, so he's nice. finally in the party. You're but, telling me that it's your game of the year. I think so. I think it might be because I, you know, I'm a more slow pace and more RPG guy. And this has been like the only game I kind of go back to. I already spent like a hundred something hours in it. Picking it back up again, I already have like twelve hours. Okay, scratching so, that itch for you. Oh yeah. Very nice. Um. You guys want to do a quick Slay the Spire minute? Or... Go right ahead. Let's go. No, I mean, it's you guys. I haven't played. I haven't played either. Well, Tyler finally has beaten it with all three characters. Right, Tyler? Yep. Congrats. Congrats on that. I fucking made it to the heart 
three times in a row using Tyler's strategy. I was like, huh, he said he went with a zero deck. Let me try a zero deck with the defect. Went with it, and I was surprised how I got myself that I got myself to the heart three straight tries. So if you've missed previous episodes, you unlock the heart, who is the final boss in the card, the roguelike deck building game, uh, Slay the Spire. You have to beat it with all three characters, and then you have to go to an extra level, and you fight the heart, who is the final, final boss. Yes. And uh, Kenny has died every single time. three times. Three times in a row. Each run's taking you, what, about an hour and a half? No, actually, I run with the, because after the first time I did the zero deck, I kind of realized how to go make it. And and I got efficient with it. My runs are under an hour. Oh wow! Getting to the heart, so they're at they're I'm clocking it almost at fifty eight minutes. Nice. Wow. Well, yeah, so how do you do? How do you good. build this zero deck? So Is it just see, I, I you can't. I'm I feel like you can't, feel like you can't build it all the time though, because the last I wanted to build that deck again in in one of my runs, but I was just given like no zero cards the entire run, like none after battles, none at the merchant. And I was like, all right, well, this isn't working. <laughs> I was going to say, it's, it, for a game that's like super heavy, like RNG-based like that, it's got to be really hard to stick to like a, quote-unquote, like a meta kind of yeah. deck. Yeah. With like, okay, this is a sure win when it's like, okay, you're going to get all these random cards, but never guaranteed. So the way I was doing it, and the three times that I did it, that I was able to put together a as close to possible zero deck, because of course it was like, out of 25 cards in my deck, five had had, had a cost to it. Okay, so so zero Honors. deck meaning it takes no MP to use essentially. Yep. Um, so what I was doing was I was fighting as much as possible the first floor. So first floor, which was which would be the easiest floor, you know, the first before the first boss. I was trying to take on as many enemies and trying to hit as many elites. You know, I'm um, not ends actually, <laughs> shops. So that I can remove cards. Ah, oh, gotcha. So that I can add and then add, hopefully add a, if I couldn't find a zero card, I'd skip it. I mm. wouldn't pick up a card. Nice. i just keep rolling and pick up a zero card, remove a card. So every time I, I, I was able to remove a card, I'd take out, I went one strike, one defense, one strike, one defense, and I kept picking up different cards. Or I'd, up, I'd stop at a rest site and I'd upgrade a card. I'd check my cards, what I have, and even cards that did have cost to it. I would check their upgrades before I pick them up and, you know, after a battle, because if I can upgrade it to the point where it then becomes a zero, a zero card, then that's, that's a card I want because then at a rest, a rest, a rest place, I can upgrade and I make it zero, mm, even okay. though it's a currently a one, you mm-hmm. know, one cost. So that's how I was rolling with it. And I pretty much got, you know, a close to zero deck as possible. Mm-hmm. And on three of those runs and I got to the heart. Mm-hmm. But did you have the all for one card? Oh, for one. No, I did not. Dude, that, so that, that's, that, that's like you, you need that card yeah, in yeah. that deck. So, <laughs> maybe, so maybe that's the card I needed. And so you do 10 damage and all the zero cards just fly into your hand. All, all the zeros from your discard pile go into your hand. Wow. Oh, so yeah. So you see, I need that one. Yeah. And then I had like, I, I had, like when I built my zero deck, I had a combination of that card. I had, I think I had like two seek cards. No. And then I also had card, a couple cards that increased my focus. So the, mm. the orbs that you have yep. do more damage or mm-hmm. more shield or more whatever. Um, and like all those in combination because I was able to, I was able to use the seat cards to like pick out the, the increased focus mm. cards like first. So I was able to kind of like mill my deck of like the cards that actually had value and as all the zero cards got discarded as long as i drew the all for one card um towards the end of the deck then it was just like cake um but then i also had like some relics that helped me out i had a relic that was like every three turns you gain uh an orb slot and then one of my focus cards was lose an orb slot gain three focus or something like that how do you guys feel about (laughs) this is supposed to be the slay the spire minute i'm sorry um how do you feel about orb orb slots um because sometimes i feel like it's better just to have three because then they rotate in and out more okay so on one of my zero deck runs i went with um i remember tyler mentioning something about cycling through orbs you know with with some of his cards so i was i went with a deck where it increased my orb slots but i was cycling through orbs a lot and i was giving myself energy a lot because i was able to pick up the 
the um i was able to pick up some zero cards that gave me plasma which yeah. gives you the energy so like i was kind of cycling energy my giving myself the mp and cycling through my orbs and i kind of was just going through a huge cycle that was like op defect is definitely the most fun character it is yeah yeah yep. and i think having more orb slots is is definitely better if you have cards that are going to increase your your focus mm -hmm. because that is going to benefit you a lot more in the in the long run gotcha. um compared to just having a minimum of three uh, orb slots that are the lightning's doing three damage each time whereas if you have a couple focus tagged onto that the lightning's now doing like five or six damage each time um the shields are giving you like five or six shields each time compared to two or three yeah then you have the ones that evoke evoke an orb twice so it's you know that card is a one energy card but when you upgrade it, it turns into a zero energy card yeah, so, we've been over this. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. So that one, that, there's a couple that I I really kind of gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. And then there's when if if you get the unseizing top, which I was telling you guys, which is a relic that you need for for a zero deck. I got it on one of my runs. So every time your hand goes empty, it, it gives you it makes you it draws a card for you. And you can you can kind of keep going like that. And there's the the claws attack, which is zero zero MP. But it goes up by two damage every single time you use the card, and it increases every claws card. So then you could potentially, potentially, if you have like six of them in your in your deck, you can make it crazy hard, uh, crazy, crazy strong. And if you have strength plus five, you know, like it, it can it can get really fun with defects with it. Okay. So that's our minute that's our minute so we went on that for like 10 or 15 but we we like slay the spire you can get it on game pass for free also available on switch ps4 um yeah all right guys i think that we ought to move into cruising for a news that's cruising for a news and if you weren't able to make that out the part of the show where we Find the news that's been going on in the video game world, put it on a page, read it back to you, and talk about it. Uh, we have some breaking news today, which is actually pretty unfortunate, it sounds like. Um, I'm going to pull that up on my phone because we didn't have time to print it. That's... That's Not a pit. That is the best picture that I have for people at home. You can't see Wiley's phone. He just pulled his phone out, and it wasn't anything risque, but... The first picture that popped up on his phone was a picture of Donald Trump sitting with a big pouty face in a big deflated ball pit. And I gotta say, definitely the best picture I've seen this week. Yeah, that was good. All those jiggly puffs. Oh, yes. I, I tell you, the, Melania, I swear to you, you're supposed to put air in the bounce house. How are we supposed to get buried at his birthday party? I have all the Pokemon plates over here. and Everybody at Kotaku is getting fired. Somebody look into this. Wiley, if you, if you would. <laughs> Tell Jigglypuff to get out. She's my favorite. All right, so um, sad news here, and still developing, and still a little bit unclear. Uh, this comes from GameSpace.com, which I have not uh, heard of. Not sure if they're reputable, but I don't know. It seems fine. Could be fake news. We'll it, see. Yeah, it's not fake because you can definitely follow along somewhat cryptically with the latest tweets from Jason Schreier, who's the I don't, I'm guessing the head editor journalist at Kotaku.com. Or X. Um, our ex now. Um, so Kotaku, uh, he, he's kind of the guy that gets all the scoops, who can confirm leaks and uh, expose leaks, um, does great uh, reporting on situations at developers, and uh, just sort of is the number one games journalist. Um, so it appears that most of the working staff at gaming megasite Kotaku have been fired. Writers and editors were handed their pink slips throughout the day. Affected personnel includes investigative columnist Jason Schreier, Deadspin deputy editor Barry Pacheski, Stephen Totilo, G uh, Gia Jackson, Heather Alexandra, and likely others. Um, according to Schreier's Twitter feed, staff were fired after an article was posted about the atrocious, atrocious ah, geez, ads on the site. It has since been removed. The article encouraged readers to contact Kotaku's new private equity owner management team. CEO of Geo Media, Jim Spanfeller, was instrumental in letting staff know they had been fired. Um, hmm. So, and then it says, we'll keep an eye out on the story as it develops. It remains unknown whether the site will be shut down permanently or if a new staff will be hired. As for the staff members that have been fired, it further remains unknown if they will stick together to start a new site, go to other gaming sites, or strike out on their own as independent uh, contractors. Uh, 
one of the tweets from Jason Schreier. I don't know what's going to happen next, but to everyone who has read and supported our work at Kotaku over the years, thank you. Heart emoji. So, I think that um, this is some very sad news. Um, maybe not the wisest idea to call out your website in that fashion. Saying, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean... Uh, well, but like, what ads were they getting? Like, I guess they were like autoplay video ads or something. Those uh, really I, annoying ones that like already do the... Vo- like, I, mean, I, I mean, that's understandable then because those are super annoying, but if it's paying your bills... Exactly. Yeah, but I mean... But then again, where do you draw the line? I know, but I mean, he, they're firing most of the staff, which is effectively killing the website, and I wish I had time to do a little bit more research on if Kotaku is owned by a big corporation and this is just a little subsect yeah i don't know um so they could have they could have possibly been bought out by a bigger bigger company at some point in time i wouldn't be surprised no. um because i mean if this is coming up from you know higher ups uh I, it's all speculation so but it's still huge news uh the fact that this is, is a big shake up in the traditional games media um another plot not plot another point on the free speech Following up the Blizzard thing, oh, mm. and it's not the it's, same, a, but it, it's tough because it had it been on like a tweet that yeah. Jason Schreier made, I'd be all like, "Damn, like that's fucked up." But making posting an article to the website, that's what they did, right? Yeah, being like, "Well, these ads are terrible. You yeah, need to email our CEO." Terrible, yeah. Like, no, oh, fuck that. You're not gonna go on my website if I'm the CEO. I'm like my website and trash my fucking trash ads. <laughs> trash my trash ads. I don't know. It just, <laughs> for to me, I don't know. I don't like. It. I don't agree. I mean, it sucks they got fired, but I mean, that's also one they're censoring their articleists. I mean, I get it. That's pretty much just self like deprecation. It's like, ah, our ads are shit. Don't look at our site. But I mean, it does suck that it's like, oh wow, you're gonna talk trash about it and just pfft, squash it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, essentially saying, well, we don't really even need Kotaku. Uh, Basically. I, it'll be interesting to see what comes next. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and best of luck to those affected. Um, and no yeah. worries. Once I'm we sure have, he'll end up on his feet. Once we have a website, we'll have trash ads up there for you guys. Mm. Yeah. The best porn ones. Porn game. <laughs> and then Kenny will, or no, Anthony will complain about it, and Kenny will fire him. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It's, you didn't get the right ones. I just get the ones you want me to pick. No, they're not. I want the pink haired girl, not the blue haired. The same thing. They're both in it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we will it. see where it goes. Um, so moving on, uh, we'll have more on that next week, I'm sure, as it becomes clearer. And it's also like a new developing story. It's, yeah, too. It's a, we're just seeing new tweets coming out. Um, we're, we record this on Tuesdays. Videos go up on Wednesdays. Um, so there'll probably be more information out by the time this is up. So check it out if you're interested. Uh, so moving on to the next story, another bit of a bummer of a story. It's about Ubisoft and their sort of candid um, message to investors. Um, Division 2 and Ghost Recon Breakpoint made stock prices sharply fall, uh, Mm -hmm. caused Ubisoft to drastically change its upcoming release calendar. Uh, The following three games have all been delayed to the next fiscal year, meaning they will come out post-April 1st, 2020 and before March 31st, 2021. Uh, These include Rainbow Six Quarantine, Watch Dog Legions, and Gods and Monsters. The delay announcements followed news of substantially decreased financial targets for Ubisoft's current financial year or fiscal year. Reductions that the company said were the result of lower than expected revenue from Ghost Recon Breakpoint and to a lesser extent, The Division 2. Speaking candidly about Breakpoint in a press release accompanying today's announcement, the CEO of Ubisoft, Yves Guillemont, Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Explained that while the game's quality appeared on track prior to release, critical reception and sales during the game's first weeks were very disappointing. Despite its relative failure, however, Ubisoft will continue to support the game and listen to the community community in order to deliver the necessary improvements. Um, now, I thought this part is interesting. I know this seems like a lot to talk about this one story, but um, they've identified three areas that the publisher believes led the the, to the Division 2 and Breakpoints under performance. The less than perfect implementation of quote unquote gameplay innovations and lack of differentiation factors in Breakpoint and in the case of Division 2, the difficulty in generating interest for a sequel to a live game. On the later latter point, Ubisoft says it will need to ensure there is more time between each iteration of live games in the future. 
By so, games, they mean like ones that are still going, like online currently, like Division. Yep. Not only that, but ones that are sort of, you know, oh, there's an event happening in the city. We got to go, like, you gotcha. know, Destiny, yeah. Fortnite, you know, Schedule everything's stuff. trying to be live game these days. Mm-hmm. Apex Legends, um, things with seasons and things yeah. that are going to keep players coming back. Um, so I did wasn't personally interested in either of these games, despite the fact that I... I'm a big Ubisoft fan for the most part. I really enjoy Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, um, some Tom Clancy games here and there. So mm-hmm. I hope that this doesn't foresee too much trouble for them. I mean, maybe it's good that they're taking stock and taking a little bit more time to innovate on their releases. But what do you think? You guys have any thoughts on this? I mean, the only game I was really interested in coming out was uh, that Gods and Monsters game. It looked, looked kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of a bummer to hear that that's going to be delayed. Um, but if it's delayed because they're just making it better, then... I mean, yeah, hopefully that's what they're doing is going in and improving the overall quality and tweaks. But here's the thing, though. I bet at least one of those three games ends up getting canceled or, or severely pushed back to next generation because in the time of March 2020... And April 2021, mm-hmm. or you know, reverse that. There's going to be new consoles. We're going to have PS5. We're going to have Xbox Four, whatever they call it. I see. I see Watch Dogs getting pushed back to the next to gen next console. gen. I think that would be wise. And I see Gods and Monsters ending our, our current gen cycles. I don't know where to put Rainbow Six Quarantine. I think Rainbow Six is it's quarantine like a spiritual successor to Siege. I really don't know much. I about don't know it. either. I, I would have to look into it because if it's a brand new game in the in the spirit of like Siege, then I'm all for it because I love Siege. But Siege is like already it's still it's like the top game, yeah. five most played games right now. But that would be a good one if it's going next gen. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like so, they, it was already bloated as it was. Um, yeah. This and I, you know. It, Towards the end of a console's life cycle, life cycle, people are, unless you're really bringing the heat, I think people are maybe ready for new consoles at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're pretty much saving the money for new consoles. Yeah, that's a good point to as well. Not trying to spend money on $60 for a brand new game if it's not going to play on the next one. or It'll probably it's play. Gonna, or it's not going to look that much better on the next one. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Um, and then uh, moving on, another delay. This one... I care about uh, this is not much to say about this one but the last of us 2 was pushed from its February 20th release date all the way to May 29th this is following when they had their big press event where they let a bunch of uh, game journalists and influencers play a couple hours of the game uh, as well as unveil the release date of February 20th um, Neil Druckmann the director of the game put out a statement saying essentially we want to get this up to the signature Naughty Dog quality, and we think the only way we can do this is to give our team a few extra months so we're not crunching so bad. And, you know, it's a bummer, but I thought it was a little neat that the original Last of Us came out in, I believe it was June 2013, and then we got the PS4 uh, in November, and this is getting a similar time frame with Last of Us Part Two coming out before the PS5, just sort of the swan song of the system. Um, just setting it off into the into the moonlight on a bloody and brutal ship that will be the last of us too. And that sounds about right. Yeah. With lots of girls kissing. Yeah, maybe one kiss. Maybe two kisses. Just one. No. One cheek. Yeah, that was a good kiss. Um all righty. Next story, Fallout 76 fail. I don't know if you knew about this. You probably did. I think this happened the day after we recorded last week, but Fallout 76 unveiled its $12.99 a month subscription service. Oh, my God. I don't know about you guys, but this is what makes me want to jump in. Oh, yeah. It's so dumb. Who was playing this game that they thought this was a oh. viable option? Apparently, people are playing it. I, it's the not hardcore 76ers. There's yeah, only 76 that, of them 76 left. 76 <laughs> right I wouldn't be surprised if it's not much more. than. No, it's got to be a few thousand at least. But I don't know. It's I I, listen, I, I, I don't know. They I could mean, be they could be potentially one of our viewers. But listen, I mean, apparently there's I, other games potentially. To play although there's a very small chance. Yeah, there's <laughs> other games to play. But there's then. a crossover there. <laughs> you can play Fallout Three, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout Four. I mean, we love those games. Outer Worlds. Go play Outer Worlds instead of this. Yes, which was a big kind of trending thing. Like you can get Game Pass for a dollar a month and play New Vegas as well as Outer Worlds and. So yeah, Instead so thirteen bucks a month or a hundred dollars a year. <laughs> um, this is a story via the now 
in Limbo Kotaku. <laughs> There's never a dull moment in the world of Fallout 76, the online multiplayer game of post-apocalyptic survival and adventuring. Last week, publisher Bethesda announced that the game's much-requested edition of computer-controlled characters was delayed until next year. Today, the publisher said it will be selling <laughs> premium subscriptions that will provide players with access to private servers at the cost of $13 a month. Bethesda calls the new program Fallout First. Oof and pitches it in a new blog post as a premium membership that offers something players have been asking for since before launch, private worlds for you and your select friends. For the cost of that subscription, a player gets access to a private version of the world that they can share with up to seven other players who, who don't also have to be subscribers. Bethesda also indicates that those private worlds will at some point support mods. So mm -hmm. since this story came out, um, if that wasn't a big enough fail for you, we got this coming from Polygon. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ostensible reason to fork over money in the first place, long requested private servers, doesn't seem to deliver on what it promises. Players say the privacy afforded has some loopholes, such as the inability to restrict access beyond one's own friends list. That means players with very large friends lists can just go in the game at any time. Uh, they can't go completely invisible and make their world invitation only. Anyone, anyone in the list can just join. Secondly, the claim that private servers deliver a newly created world is also questionable. Some players have anecdotally described finding dead NPCs and looted areas. I thought the game didn't have NPCs, but whatever. Um, which implies that these are recycled instances now sold as brand new worlds. The most pernicious bug, however, involves the scrap box, an unlimited capacity storage space where players can dump their broken down junk. Several players have said they mm. have lost everything. That's uh, nice. wow. $13 a month, man. I want to pay for disappointment. You so, know you know what you could pay $2 more for? What? Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, if it's not a fucking disappointment like this. Yes, yeah, so, but or you could probably get Game Pass Ultimate for like a dollar for 2 years or some shit. They're always yeah. running crazy promotions. Um so yeah, what the hell Bethesda? Get your shit together. Slowly but surely they're dying. Oh, I don't want I don't want to go that far, man. Yeah, the only thing that's going to save them at this point is a, a new Elder Scrolls. <laughs> well, you hope. I fear for a new Elder Scrolls. It's going to have microtransactions. Oh, better not. It better <laughs> not. You're going to be able to buy a Daedric armor for 3.99. Oh, no. <laughs> I think they learned anything from Dude, uh, Dragon Age. It's like, <laughs> one of the first controversies ever as far as microtransactions go, I think was from Oblivion. You could buy a horse for like 4 bucks or something, which now is like Four bucks for a horse, that's a steal. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a steal, especially yeah. when you're playing World of Warcraft. This fucking shit's go for like 25 bucks. Oh, yeah. Um, so anyway, oh, like, insane. I'm a fan of Bethesda. I can't wait to play Doom when it finally comes out. Uh, they got some other cool-looking games on the horizon. Doom, Doom's going to only let you play five minutes of oh, TDM before before you got to pay for it for the rest <laughs> of the <laughs> with, with Doom first. <laughs> Doom <laughs> first. <laughs> Oh, man. It's going to download on your hard drive. I heard a bad space. rumor that Doom is actually partially being delayed so they can figure out better ways to monetize it. Um, oh, no. I think I heard that on the Bombcast last week. Ooh. Brad said that he might have heard that through the grapevine, but um, that's wow. neither here nor there. All speculation. We don't comment on that. Yes, is, we do. Is Bethesda mm. EA? No. The, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just making sure. No, they're, <laughs> so they're much, their own thing. They're, 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 you know, so much monetization. I got confused. I thought it was EA. They <laughs> haven't had quite of a, of a fall from grace as Blizzard has in the past few weeks, okay. but it's uh, it's been more of a long and drawn out uh, flailing about. Oh, so, oh, so it's pulling the magic carp on us right before it goes ooh, ooh, ooh. full, full Garrett those. Yeah. I like the analogy. Right? I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, they are a business to yeah. play devil's advocate, and I get it, but... When it comes, there comes a point where it's like, shut up, Anthony. We're tub gamers. Tumble one. <laughs> oh, so you want to want to be rationally? devil's advocate now, right? Yeah. Trash ads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm defending him. Okay. I'm defending free speech and hentai ads. I want to look at my hentai ads. Okay. They're not all bad. Try not to come. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to come. Click this ad. This game will make you come in five seconds. <laughs> no, I would definitely be upset if I was if those ads were on. Doctors <laughs> hate this man. Find out why. <laughs> Is your ding dong not big enough? Uh, uh, moving on to no need to remind Blizzard. <laughs> is all it right, me? yeah. So now we got to talk about our weekly Blizzard dump, um, and this is not exactly negative. So this is actually from ESPN. I guess they are reporting on games now. They're getting to esports. Blizzard Entertainment will unveil the next iteration of its popular Overwatch franchise, featuring a new logo, new game modes, maps, heroes, and PVE features at BlizzCon this week, which is coming right up. Uh, we'll be able to talk about it next week on the show. According to a BlizzCon source and BlizzCon training document, which included information about Overwatch 2 
and was obtained by ESPN. The document obtained by ESPN offers a first look for what to expect from Blizzard's franchise esports title at BlizzCon, which begins on Friday. Hero talents and in-game items are coming to Overwatch 2 PvE, and one of the missions will be a four-player story experience set in Rio de Janeiro, as opposed to the 6v6 gameplay in the original Overwatch, according to the document. Blizzard did not respond to a request for comment. While much of the focus will be on story and narrative elements, Overwatch will see its first new mode since the game was released in beta in 2015 with Push, set to be unveiled alongside Assault, Control, Escort, Hybrid. So what, there's going to be five new modes? That, that confused me a little bit. Push will be set on a new ba map based in, in quotes, Toronto, <laughs> according to the document. Both the PvE story and new game mode are expected to be available to play for BlizzCon attendees this weekend. Blizzard is also expected to announce at least one new hero during the event. Tyler, you are the Overwatch man. What do you think? It's interesting. That's for sure. Um, it'll probably get me back into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll get the new Overwatch, play some characters, try some new game modes. Um, what platform are you going to get it on? You go back to PC? Most likely, if mm -hmm. I, because I assume by the time this game is released, I'll probably have my my dig set up and everything, so I can start streaming again and playing, and I can get I can be good. There you go. But one thing I was Give curious me. is that it says they would unleash unleash. Well, they would unveil <laughs> one new hero, which is what is it? What's gonna happen? Is the original Overwatch just gonna be kaput? That's what I'm wondering. And, and are they just going to have the exact same characters, but adding one? Maybe they'll change Overwatch into Overwatch 2. So, so, so oh. maybe they'll just take the game and just say like what they did with Fortnite Season 2 or 2, whatever. Just be like, Overwatch and slap it 2. Okay. Keep the same thing and no, then just I, add I, all this crap on it. I think that's actually from, a good theory. Some of the leaks that I've yeah. seen is that like some of the characters are getting like full-on like overhauls, like new abilities, new passives, things like that. Like they were showing like... A breakdown of what's what's the girl that's real popular? Um, tracer. 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 Yes, they were showing the tracer like a breakdown of some new abilities and some new passive abilities as well for tracer that would be just for Overwatch too. You know, mm. so they're they're giving like they're making it so that the characters don't feel the same from Overwatch mm. one. That's at least some of the leaks. Huh. No, no, like I think yeah. that that's true. I think that it's likely to happen, but I don't think it negates what Anthony is philosophizing. It's also Blizzard, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, well, duh. <laughs> That's oh, where I've been at. They're going to have uh, Overwatch yeah. 2. They're going to have Overwatch Classic. Yeah. That's, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Overwatch that's Classic Overwatch is coming Classic. in 2028. Yep. No, that's... that's... We cracked the code! <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, Cataclysm, World of Warcraft Cataclysm, you saw it. It changed the whole game. A bunch of people were just like, ah, stupid, and left. And other people were like, oh. Like me. I was like, I can play as a werewolf now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, a no, but... Werewolf. Yeah. I think that that would be huge if, like, Overwatch, you boot it up. Now it's Overwatch 2. Um, mm-hmm. I think that it actually makes more sense because if not, aren't you going to split the community in a major way? For sure. If people aren't into it, mm -hmm. if you're having the same characters plus one, it makes sense too. I think I'm, you're right on the money here, Anthony. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to stick it. I'm also gonna I'm gonna take a leap here and do a second bet is that whatever character they reveal, if it's a female, hundred percent within the next five hours, going to be way more new porn on her. And two, if it's a male, within the next like day or two, I would say no, maybe like seven hours, there's gonna be more porn on him. Trust me, Overwatch porn is just it's out there. Just it's out there. I've seen floods, it. <laughs> floods. <laughs> okay. What is it? Rule thirty-four. Oh yeah, rule thirty-four. Ex Buru, Dan Buru. Okay. Porn Second home. prediction. Ex videos. That, you know, Blizzard could use some good PR right now. It's gonna be a free upgrade. Mm -hmm. That's a reach. Yeah. You think that's a reach? That's because a reach. the games, I mean, if it's a free, so many games are free to play nowadays that, anyway. That, that's a reach. Well, it's a, all right. I, I, I'm just saying, with, with Blizzard's model, like, they've never dropped, like, a free expansion. Put some money on it, Kenny. Here's the Storm is free, though. I still owe you five bucks. Do you owe me five bucks? I'm trying to remember. No, I owe five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> For what? For the bet with Fortnite. Oh, how, with the How days? long it would last? Huh? Oh, right. How, how long, long the Fortnite blackout would last? Yep. Well, My Fortnite abs, five, five, <laughs> five bucks for that. But Blizzard has never dropped an expansion for free. Ever. I know, but the like, times they are changing. They're, they're not going to start now. You think China would let them? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Especially China's not going to let them drop a free. A free I'm one. just fucking with that. <laughs> I will. I, I'm going to keep it on the bet though. Like they'll probably just upgrade it. Nope. 
Nope. So you I think there'll be I'm, two separate games? I'll take you on that. Okay. Anthony. That's a good bet. That, yeah. One kiss and one butterscotch candy. No, no. You have to go 24 hours without waifu porn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, does that mean I can't draw it? Nothing. What? Nothing. What if I have a commission I have to do? Then you, then you let them know your, your hands, are, <laughs> hands are dirty. Sorry, man. My hands are tied. I'm in a bed right now. I got 24 hours. All right. I, I agree. Sounds Moving good. on. Ah! It's all right. I drank it all. Uh, this is a... Uh, wow, that didn't work out. No, yes, it is. Uh, Death Stranding coming to PC. Tweet from Hideo Kojima. Thanks to all of you who have been supporting hashtag Death Stranding. Death Stranding releases on PS4 on November 8th. Holy crap, that's really soon. It's very soon. Furthermore, Kojima Productions is happy to announce that Death Stranding will be coming to PC in early 2020. This is neat. Yeah. I mean, we're going to get an even better looking version of a really good looking game before we get the remastered ps5 version in 2022 mm -hmm. yep. yo you because you know it will happen it will happen they'll probably do that and they'll, maybe they'll bundle it with mgs5 remake for the ps5 uh, or port i don't think there's been enough time yeah no. yeah they haven't they haven't hashed things out yet no or maybe they'll put the pt demo back in i still have it that's all that's actually going for a lot of money right now i've heard that but now i think people are like figuring out new ways to, to download like it, it and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. um but yeah, so I think it's a little interesting that Sony's becoming a little more flexible with its exclusives. Uh, we also saw, what's the game, Detroit Become Human, available on the Epic Game Store now. Uh, they're not technically a first-party studio, or are they? I'm not actually 100% sure, sure if they actually own them. I don't think they do anymore. So anyway, moving on. Technically, they're an indie studio, Kojima Productions. Um, mm. They're not actually owned by Sony. They're just the ones that funded the game. It was probably, I don't know, in the fine print that, you know, sure, you can put it on PC, but it has to be on PlayStation first, and don't even talk about that Xbox. <laughs> as long as you don't let me get back with Konami, and I don't care. <laughs> All right. Fuck them. Fuck them, indeed. <laughs> All right, next story. EA will sell games on Steam again, starting with Star Wars, Jedi Fallen Order, and Apex Legends. Thanks for adding this story, whoever did. EA Games are returning to Steam. The company announced that the new releases like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will be released on Valve's digital storefront, while ge past games will be available through EA Access. Ugh. Does that mean they're going to be available on both or just Steam? Both. Both, okay. Today, EA has announced that EA Access will be available on Steam next year. Huh. This is a subscription service where $4.99 a month members can get unlimited access to a select library of EA games, including Madden NFL 19 and Anthem. So this is kind of like um, when you have Hulu and you can add on Showtime. Yep. Mm -hmm. EA hasn't released a game on Steam since 2011, so today's news is exciting for anyone who's a fan of EA games but isn't interested in its Origins launcher. EA was one of the first companies to put all of its game on its own launchers, but since then, companies like Ubisoft, Bethesda, and Activision have followed suit. All right. So mm. it's kind of cool how they teased it. So they put up a tweet of a EA Cup with Steam. Coming up, up, above it, and everybody was like, "Wait a second, EA is going to, going back to Steam." And then the next twenty four hours later, they dropped the real, the full announcement, like, "Oh, EA okay. games back on Steam." Okay, but EA trying like, to get oh, back like, in some good graces. Exactly. Like, uh, I think they realize if the games aren't doing that great, might as well get them onto as many platforms as, uh, as possible. As many eyeballs as possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, like, who's perusing the? EA store the on the Origin regular. Store, yeah. yeah, like it. I think I have three free games on the Origin store, and I don't even realize it. I don't even have a gaming PC. Yeah, the only reason that I had it was I bought The Sims Four for my sister a few mm. years ago, and it was cheaper to get it through there. Yeah, right. So that's the only time I've ever used it. Um, but then again, it's only been on Xbox for a long time, right? And then they just, it's only been on PS4 now for a few months. What, EA Access? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was originally straight on the Xbox, and now it's been on PS4 since, want to say, August, July? One of the two. Okay. And it's pretty neat. You get 10%. If you're an EA Access member, you get 10% off of games and also off of, like, digital transactions. So if you buy the Apex, whatever it is, like, coin, microtransaction. Mm -hmm. So you get 10% off of it. Oh, Ooh, 10%. <laughs> for the year it costs um thirty dollars for the year. I mean that's a good price. It's a good value. And pretty much all these EA games end up in the vault where you could play them for free. So let's say Star Wars Jedi the Fallen Order, right? 
it'll drop in November. I can say by February it's free to it's free. Full game is free in the vault in EA Access. We'll see. I doubt it. It's literally within like four months. No. Tends to they tend to go up for free. Huh. Battlefield has been out there like within four months. Madden, the same thing, like so these games end up there. Hmm. Unravel. Like they, they don't last long on the before. So they Battlefield become... five is in it now? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Battlefield five and one. Okay. Yeah. Wow. We shall see come February if you can play it for free. Uh did you guys see the previews for uh Fallen Order? We talk about that at all? So it looks amazing. It looks real good. Like it, it looks like I know you mentioned like it had like a Dark Souls feel like from some of the battles. It, Everybody's saying that. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like it blends a couple different genres together, you know. Um, from what I've been looking. So it's not it doesn't have a full on like Dark Souls vibe to it. But it's like a also, scaled down force unleashed in a yeah, way. Yeah, it's almost, yeah. So it definitely looks great. I'm in, I love Star Wars, so I'm picking it up. Mm-hmm. Um and of course, being a Jedi, like you know, who doesn't want to play like that? You know, True I still. It's I'm been a while still, since we had a good Jedi game. Still for sure. waiting for a Knights of the Old Republic three. Mm. Yeah, I'm holding on hope that one day I'll get that. I could see it happening, maybe next gen Someday. sometime. And that if Obsidian does it, you know, the nostalgia waves upon us. I and it'll be, be an Xbox exclusive. Oh shit, that'd be big. Mm-hmm. Although we're getting Outer Worlds too, I think. Well, I know from my understanding is that Outer Worlds. Was like kind of because you know, Xbox owns Obsidian now. Up now, so Outer Worlds is like their last game that's going to be on every platform. I think Outer Worlds Two will be Xbox and PC only. Only, yep. I mean, that's my that's my guess, and I know that the developers have been pretty candid about. Oh yeah, if we if this game's a success, we really want to make a sequel. So exactly. nice. All right, guys, All right. Anthony. Yes, Wiley. Did you read the outline? No, he didn't. I did not, but. <laughs> I have been thinking. Oh, okay. that's always scary. And what I've been thinking uh, about will be answered momentarily when you ask me nicely. So how do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> what? How do you ask? You gotta ask nicely. What's your question of the week, Anthony? My... Please? Yes. <laughs> so Matt, I'm totally not stalling for time. But uh, my question of the week to everybody is what is the game that you got most frustrated with, be it a single player, multiplayer, and what, actually, no, I'll phrase this a little better. What is a game that made you break something? <laughs> okay. Mm. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've broken anything. Or I guess I should probably say rage. Like you've been like just visibly like red and mad. Like you felt you, the veins in your head just pulsing. I mean, there's just it's a long duty. list for me. <laughs> <laughs> your first, how about your first one? And those fucking way campers. back when you you could tell like what rage was at an electronic. Thing. Okay, so I don't know what game it actually was, but I do have a distinct memory of when yeah. I was a kid. I was had a PS One controller. It didn't even have joysticks on it yet. I got so frustrated that I put the controller. Near my face, I bit the start button off. <laughs> what game was it to? I don't remember. No, I no. got. I That's got awesome, you, though. That's I, I got you with my my first rage game, mm-hmm. Lion King on the Sega Genesis. Understandable. Fucking game. What level? The whole game. <laughs> the whole game the was frustrating. Yeah. Everything. That game, I did not beat it as a child. It's dude, it's hard. And they're fucking re-releasing it. Yeah, they did. They that are, that in a, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty neat. That Fuck is sick. those games. I've thought about buying it just so I could see my son frustrated. <laughs> Do it. So he could relive Go in your room and let play Lion King. My childhood <laughs> pains. It's stu- and they've admitted to the developer, they're like, all right, we didn't want to make this a game where you can, you know, because people go out and rent it back when you could do that blockbuster. Yep. They're like, oh, we don't want it a game where you can go out, rent it for a weekend and beat it and return it. They're like, we're going to pad this out and make it way too hard. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Fuck you guys. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys ain't campers. I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> oh, I bet you the fucking up. developers are campers in fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say I Lion do. King. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them, too. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Tyler, what do you do? What do you do? Tyler's I, know, I mean, the episode, the, the, this Rocket League. I mean, this <laughs> the first one ever. What about in your little baby brain? Tic-tac-toe. We flash your back. Really get angry. I mean, Call Mario of Duty, Mario. maybe. Um, Mario sixty four. No. PlayStation. I was just good at those games. <laughs> <laughs> just great. Yeah, I, nothing really. I mean, there's the From Software games are always a an incredible battle. Like uh, the final boss fight in Sekiro earlier this year, it was. Um, 
you know, like I was working in a restaurant at the time, I would like not have to go in until three o'clock and I would be trying from, you know, 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. or 3 p.m. to beat this boss and still failing Holy shit. the whole time and just Damn. going to work, like feeling so defeated. He's like pissed. <laughs> Smacking the fucking smoked meats. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit out of my face. Pulling the shit out of this part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, I'd have to say mine. Uh, I've definitely got two. The first, I think the first one was definitely Dragon Ball Z Budokai 1. Oh. I couldn't beat Frieza. The first time I couldn't beat Frieza, I died to Frieza like 30, I uh, probably like more than 30 times. And I remember just sitting there at the end, like maybe like my 20th time looking at the TV as at my grandma's house. And I brought my PS2. And I was just looking at the controller and looking at the TV. And I was just going. <laughs> Like, Sweetie, you want some sugar cookies? Are you okay? I was like, my grandma. Just, just mad. And then there was also Tony Hawk uh, Underground One with the Hawaii mm. level. I couldn't do all the tricks on the pipe mm. or on the uh, yeah, it was like the ramp or the slide or the railing. Super railing. <laughs> you had to do a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, something that you skate on. Yeah, something. Okay. That was mine. Fucking All right. campers. <laughs> All you level-headed levelers out there, thank you for watching the Level With You show. Please check out our other videos, especially our Let's Play that we just put up of Man of Medan. It'll actually be up tomorrow if you're watching this the day of release of the video. Um, Listen, if you're a <laughs> camper right now you're, while you're watching and playing, you got enough time to like and subscribe because you're sitting in one corner with your fucking <laughs> viper. So just do it. Just do Fu it. Please. Subscribe. All right. Please. How do you ask? Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. Until next week, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Have a good night. I hate you, campers. Bye. <laughs>